Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Keymaker Enhanced Edition with me, Bring It Dawn. We're actually gonna leave. We're gonna go and we're gonna go to the middle of nowhere first. Then we'll come back here and deal with the pirates. Our course is set, and we shall not stray. Luckily, it's a very short journey. And a chocolate ice cream isn't going anywhere. Alright, welcome to the middle of nowhere, everybody. And if I remember correctly, there's actually some... a lot more experience to be found here. This whole quest is just riddled with... millions of experience. It's... It's pretty crazy. In due time. You can come here before you go to the pirate area and get the grimoire if you so desire. My search was not in vain. I'm there. All right, there's the door. We're still under the effect of our chocolate ice cream. Let us Adventures call to them. Quick save. I wrote it like I saw it. A solid door blocks your entrance. The owner clearly doesn't care for uninvited guests. Use detect magic. The door literally shines with dozens of magical auras. It's impossible to see any pattern in this mess. It seems like the spells were thrown on the door occasionally and chaotically, rather than created in an elaborate order. Knock politely. Nothing happens. Uh, pick the lock. Yeah, break down the door. Oh, nope, alright, we're gonna reload that then. Because that's a lot of experience, and I want it. Just letting the ink dry. Something makes a crunching sound, either the door or your shoulder. The lock gives way, and the door quietly swings open. Adventures call to them. Come on now. There we go. Uh, we do need a buff up. Lindsay was called for. Before I forget. The angel's near. I wrote it like I saw it. My skills are absolute. I will protect. Okay, that'd be all we need for right now. All right, quick save, and we'll go talk to. A pile of crumpled pages covered with impeccable but unrecognizable cal calligraphic writing. Now, there's Blake more. We're gonna explore before we talk to him. Weird magical thing, obviously a faraway origin.
A rusty metal thing. Alright, so what did we just find? Charlatan's Locket. This locket makes all zero level arcane spells cast by the wearer become empowered, extended, reach, and maximized. The Binding of the Prince? Is that the other thing that I found? Robe of False Death. Minus six constitution. The wearer of this robe gains immunity to critical hits but suffers a minus six penalty to constitution. I guess it was this. A gilded copper locket engraved with the face of a laughing circus magician. What was this? Doesn't give you a description. Uh, this chain is modeled after one of those that bound the Zonkuth and Herald, the prince in chains. Three times per day, the wearer may throw this amulet at an enemy. The target fails a difficulty check at 24 reflex. Difficulty check reflex saving throw. Jeez, I'm all over the place. It becomes ensnared by the chain. The ensnared creature makes a takes a minus four penalty to dexterity, a two penalty to both armor class and attack, and takes one to six plus five bludgeoning damage each round. Additionally, each time the wearer takes damage, the chain inflicts half as much damage on the ensnared creature. So that's actually really good. I don't know where it goes. Oh, it's the necklace. Hmm. It's really good. That's not who I'd give it to. Anyway, here's Blake Moore. I'm gonna quick save before I talk to him. A large and broad man turns to you, trying to smooth his thick, tasseled hair. His deep, deep voice could have belonged to a giant. Hey, who are you? I'm someone you better treat with more respect. So, so important has come to visit good old Blakemore. Well, I shall be a most gracious host. How can I help you? Uh, what are you doing here? This humble dwelling is my workshop. It's where I create, where I'm creating my masterpiece, the Cyan Majestic Grimoire, a calligraphic work of art. The client who ordered it is my good friend, Captain Martin. Oh, he must be getting so impatient by now. I'm so far behind schedule. I just want the grimoire to be perfect, you see? I'd like to learn more about you. Ha, huh, where should I start? I am Blakemore the Wizard. I've seen many things and been to many places. From the northern realm of the Mammoth Lords to Hot Katapesh, and even to more exotic places such as the First World. Have you ever been up been to the First World? I got into the First World by chance, but in spite of that, it was easy for me to find a job there. I was soon substitute rector at a rather remarkable academy, which is located on the back of an elephant with three eyes and numerous tusks. Actually, the elephant had served as the former rector, before he caught a rare elephantine disease. I moved on once he recovered. Seeking new purpose, I wound up at the Sin Market, where I made a bargain. I came away with a fair amount of dangerous curiosity, and on top of that, a sack of tobacco, generously mixed with dirty thoughts, four to one. A horrible mixture to smoke, but my purchases didn't make me happy. Soon after, my curiosity, together with a swarm of my good friends, the squirrels, helped me discover that one of the eldest, the Lantern King, was playing a dirty trick on another elder, Shika, by assuming her form and visiting her. So I feel like her, him and uh, Shania the Tulip would get along very well. Chronomistress Shika always carefully avoided meeting herself, and she'd be jumping all over the timeline, like the water strider across the surface of the pond, because the Lantern King was assuming her form to trick her. After I revealed the game, I earned his unwanted attention, and it was time I left the first world for good. As a gesture of thanks, Shika opened a portal for me. After I stepped in it, I saw that Shika's appearance had changed, and in her place stood the Lantern King. It was not Galarian on the other side of that portal, but a far more dangerous place. How'd you wind up in Katapesh? I wound up in Katapesh by pure chance. I was planning to sail further, but seasickness had overtaken me. Katapesh is an amazing place, but I had little chance to enjoy it. In the heat of an argument, my then-sweetheart decided to teach me a lesson, 
so she drugged me and sold me to a traveling nightmare circus. There I earned my keep as a sword swallower, and the crowd was just, just crazy about me. And it wasn't such a hard job to learn. Though it, did, though it made things a bit more complicated that I had to use real combat swords, I traveled with the circus until I got a chance to escape. A well-known captain, the Hurricane King, came to see one of their art performances. He accused me of being a fake and challenged me to swallow his magnificent rapier, a weapon he cherished more than life itself. As the audience applauded, I performed the trick. It ended with my spectacular disappearance in a cloud of smoke. When the reprobate came to his senses and hurried to find me in his cherished rapier, I had already sold it to an unscrupulous vendor and was heading north to flee his revenge. That's why I try to stay away from the southern lands. And what did you do in the north? While taking part in an expedition, quite contrary to my intentions, I found myself hunted by some barbarians. While trying to escape, I climbed up into the mountains, so high that the barbarians had to abandon their quarry to the mercy of icy winds and avalanches. So I plodded across the highlands until I spotted a little light in the darkness. It turned out to be a tavern, where a celebration was underway. The highlanders weren't too happy to welcome an intruder, but they agreed to give me shelter if I beat them in a challenge. I noticed a sturdy fellow with a simple face wrapped in a cloak, so I picked him to be my rival. The competition, gluttony. The savage snatched my backpack, turned it inside out, and started to cram all my equipment into his mouth. In a short moment, the greedy Highlander had swallowed all my stuff, the backpack too, and gobbled down my axe for dessert. The barbarians were already making bets how long I would last, last out in the cold. Then I tore the mammoth's skull from the wall, broke off its tusk, and rushed for the huge barrel of beer that com comprised the entire wall. I kicked out the cork, put the tusk under the rushing stream of beer. I filled it up like a drinking horn and started to gulp. My memories of the next hours are hazy. I vaguely remember the Highlanders being extremely angry at me for drinking all their beer. I remember how they started to turn into great beasts, and my rival became a wolf with blazing eyes. He charged me, but I caught him by his ears, shoved the mammoth's tusk in his mouth like a bit, and tied my mustache to both ends to form reins. Enraged, the wolf rushed out into the night, with me firmly planted on his back. We ran through the blizzard, and the vile dog whined in anger and humiliation. In the morning, he stopped running and fell, exhausted. I looked around and realized there was not a single snowflake around. In the wild race, we'd crossed the borders of Galarian and entered an amazing place, the ancestor of all other worlds. I took pity on the wolf and let him go. He ran away at once. As for me, many adventures and exploits still lay ahead. And why do you stay here? Are you hiding from someone? Only from my numerous fans. My enemies are terrified of me, even the mighty devils. Once, thanks to a certain vile entity, I ended up in hell. I took the wrong portal. Long story short, I found myself in hell, and it was open season on my head. The devil Seraket was chasing me, and all I had to fight her off was a sack of low-quality tobacco, the flute of the hundred sea winds, a deaf-mute kobold servant, and the sulfur which laid in such abundance all around. That's more than enough to trick some clueless devils. When Seraket came for me, I used my gloomiest voice to recite a spell in a language I'd only just invented. On my signal, the kobold ignited the tobacco, the whole sack of it, and clouds of stinky smoke filled the air. I pretended to go into a fit, that was the second sign, and kobold started to play his flute. Have you ever heard a deaf mute kobold play the flute? The winds have truly gone wild. Uh, the final hurricane is descending, the end of all times, and the squirrels, my loyal friends, the squirrels start screeching in different voices from their hiding places behind the rocks. The overall effect was terrifying, I must admit. As for me, I spun a bit of magic to make the clouds of smoke look like the Devil Lord. With a booming voice, the illusory figure praised me for my efforts and gave me another task to create a grimoire, which would act as a gateway for devils into my world. When the wind subsided and the smoke cleared out, after that, Sirkat didn't dare to lay a finger on me, fearing my master's revenge. Devils are extremely stupid, after all. Okay. I'm in need of a wise advisor. Would you like to work for me? Ha! Huh. I've been an advisor once already, and I don't want to do it again. I once served, I once served one of the Merfolk kings, kings. My service went on quite successfully, until I got into an affair with the princess, the king's daughter. The revetry was guarded day and night, and anyone who dared approach stood under threat of execution. My feelings overtook me, but we managed to run away together. But on the third day, they caught up with us, the whole Merfolk army. My death was imminent, but of course I had a brilliant solution in hand. 
After the Merfolk soldiers captured us, I entertained myself with card tricks. The Merfolk were mesmerized by my talents and demanded that I teach them. So, I suggested a wager. We'd play cards. If I lost, I had to teach them my card tricks before they executed me. But for the next three days, I couldn't lose. I won all their money, armor, weapons, their dolphin mounts, their funny bone things they like to put in their ears, and even their flute of the hundred sea winds, which used to belong to their general. After three days, I became quite rich. Then the general ordered his fighters to execute me with their bare hands. But just at that moment, my princess arrived. All this time, she'd been looking for a way for us to escape, but she finally found something. It was a pirate ship. We climbed aboard, I blew the flute of the hundred winds, and our sails nearly burst, taking us away. Unfortunately, things didn't work out between me and the princess. She turned out to be quite unpleasant company. But she discovered some new talents, and now she's a successful circus fortune teller. Harem shakes his head, almost admiringly. Please allow me to visit you on occasion, Honorable Blakemore. I have never met a more stunning example of wasted words, madness, and pride incarnate. I must see the day these things bring you to a sad end. With great pleasure, Honored Dwarf. And do remind me to tell you of my meeting with Grotus. I have to admit, I was almost charmed by him. Who'd have thought the god of the end times would have such an excellent sense of humor? Alright, I'm gonna... Exit, quick save, then we're gonna try and finish the grimoire. Now that we've burned through all of his dialogue. Perhaps it's time to finish the grimoire. Blakemore stares at the scattered pages with ill-concealed yearning. The book is almost finished. It's a phenomenal piece of work. All it needs is a couple of alterations. Everything must be perfect. Blakemore's voice trembles. But if you could come back in a week, the book should be ready by then. I have almost no doubt about it. Maybe I can help you finish the book. The light of hope flashes in Blakemore's eyes. An excellent idea. Let's try. After many hours, you and Blakemore stare at your creation. The grimoire. Finished. Perfect. So if you don't pass that knowledge check, the grimoire does something different when you get your hands on it. So you finally completed your work, Blakemore. Unfortunately, you'll never have a chance to collect the reward from your master. So this is the devil that he tricked previously. The grimoire that will open this world's gate to devils. It must belong to me. Give me the book and perhaps I'll spare your life. So this gives uh, credence to all of the stories he just told us. Did you leave the door unlocked? No, I spent too much time writing it. Get out, Syracat. Help me, my furious squirrels. Here. And there's his furious squirrels. So yeah, if you don't succeed in that knowledge arcana check, uh, when you get the grimoire, you'll summon squirrels instead of... Uh, I forgot what he what it summons normally. yet <laughs> ah, test of my abilities <gasps> Octavia is down that's fine we can just resurrect her Uh, 
All right, he died. I didn't think he could die. Did I get the grimoire though? Uh, I think I'm gonna have to reload that. That's an interesting image for Blake Morris hideout. Yeah, alright, so I'm gonna try to keep him alive this time. This would be so much easier if I had you blossom in my party. We'll try it again. Um, they dispelled all of my buffs, I think. I, am ready. I, will is possible. I should have regular. I don't have it memorized, do I? Hmm. That'll help. Hide me from their side. Open to your orders. Devils are lawful, right? They're not chaotic. We'll do all of them. Why not? Alright, then we could quick save. I don't know if Blakemore was affected by any of that, but we're gonna try to keep him alive here. Yeah, Harem's buffs are gone now. I guess because, oh, the time that it probably took to finish the Grimoire. That's annoying. I didn't think he could die. I thought if he went down, he just picked himself back up. He was exploded. I don't know if that affects his uh, ability to get back up or not. Let's finish them quick. Yeah, all of our buffs are gone. That's annoying. So Blakemore is already dead. He died immediately. There's no way. I don't remember him dying last time. At least not this easily. I'm gonna try it again. Um, shoot, man. Maybe he just can't... Maybe he can't be saved. I swore that he survived last time I did this, though. Though. All right. Who will prevail? This will hurt. My okay, I wasn't giving him. Okay, I didn't give him a chance to turn into a dragon. That'd do it, I guess. Uh. 
Apparently, that's fine. We need you boss in the party anyway, so we're gonna be changing her out. That, that, that works out. Run away, Akadaya. Oh, everybody's dying. That's not good. Oh, we did not kill those frontliners in time. This is not going well. Oh, because my main character is just standing there. He died again. Son of a gun. I should have moved with him instead. Right, I'm gonna reload this again. I, I I can do this. I can keep him alive. Man, that was gonna be a lot. I'm not really having trouble with this fight previously. It's because all my buffs were off. When we make the uh, the grimoire, it's a little frustrating, but we can we can deal with it. I know this probably isn't super exciting to watch again and again, but sadly you can't save in combat. I like his shadow on the ground. It looks cool. Or her. Can't tell what it is from here. Oh, so I'm going to cast one Eagle Soul here. This strike, my masterpiece. All right, I think we did it. Like more still alive. We did it, everybody. Took a few tries. I mean, technically, I succeeded the first time. That was unexpected, but we managed. That was Syracet, by the way. The same devil I met in hell. Did you see that face? Haha. <laughs> that was one tough lady. Thank you for your help, and please give this grimoire to Captain Martin. Alright, so we got this grimoire. His grimoire is...
All right, target point within close range, one round per level. An extremely thick tome, consisting of hundreds of pages. There's an embossed golden cherub on its cover. The pages are inscribed with archaic writings and images of various bizarre creatures and landscapes drawn in a classical style. The text is confusing and full of logical twists. You feel your head swimming and quickly become lost if you try to read more than a page at a time. It took a very long time to read the whole thing. The spell summons a Movanic, Mov, I don't know how it's pronounced, Movanic, Movanic, Deva. It appears where you designate, where you designate and acts according to its initiative check, check results. It attacks your opponents to the best of its ability. So it's a, it's a summoning thing. Um, we're going to keep that. In due time. So again, if you force him to finish the grimoire and you can't help him, and you don't succeed in the knowledge check, then he... Uh... It'll summon like squirrels or something instead. Alright, so a great axe. It's a plus five axiomatic keen great axe. So that's pretty cool. It's actually a very good weapon. Yeah, I would like to have Jubilas back in my party instead of Octavia, but I might keep. No, we're gonna swap him back out. Only brought Octavia along for the uh for a quest. Ah, uh, well. Now her cloud spells might come in handy. Let's actually keep it the way it is. I'm actually going to rest one more time before we go back in. So I'm making chocolate ice cream. You know, sometimes I think all your gloom and fatalism is just a mask. And underneath it all, you're just a scare. You're simply afraid to live. I am not afraid to live, Octavia, but I am also not afraid to die. That is the great gift of Grotus. The unfairness and cruelty of this world don't make me sad anymore, because I know, sooner or later, we all will die. So is it a fatalist outlook, or is it an, an outlook of acceptance? I guess it depends. I'm sure there's like a spectrum for the uh, Grotus worshippers. It's like some of them are just accepting, and then others are more fatalist and pessimistic. All right, we're not gonna mess with Captain Martin yet. I'm gonna call it an episode before we uh, begin those checks, because there's a series of checks. This. He's where you get all the experience from. I'm there. And hopefully by getting the grimoire, I don't forfeit the chance to get that experience. We might even hit level 19 in the next episode. Because again, he drops a lot of experience. Uh, or we'll be just shy of level level 19. Which I think is higher than I beat the game last time. I think it's level 18. My last playthrough when I beat the game. We might hit level 20. I'm pretty excited about it. Anyway, gonna call it. Well, let's Anything buff up for the next episode. So I don't forget. Alright, gonna call it here. Uh, next episode, we'll talk to Captain Martin, try and level up, and then uh, we need to get head to the Academy of Grand Arts. And then we go and we confront Irvetti. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.